everyone, Susie here from Minnesota and I garden a zone 4B and it is the beginning of October and there is some beautiful fall color but there's also all the leaves are off that tree right there and that's what we're seeing a lot right now is that the leaves are just browning up, falling off before the color comes. We've just been so dry. I don't ever remember an October this dry ever. Usually October is uh, the month I wait for to at least bring us into winter a little bit better with a little more, more little more moisture, but it's it's not happening. And the next two weeks we still don't have rain predicted. Hydrangeas are offering beautiful color. Um, leaves are drooping. Uh, we did have a little bit of a light frost. This is kind of normal. They do color up like this. I mean, look at that beautiful color. But that being said, we had a really nice September. October, so far we've had 70s for highs. It's been amazing. So as much as what I'm missing the moisture, I am loving this beautiful weather and dry so I can get out and work in my gardens. I'm really trying to get things, especially before hopefully my trees are coming down. I don't know when that's happening. So, but I'm just trying to get as much done before then so I'm not in their way and I can have everything moved and up to storage and at the waste site. Those arches are on the curb for free. So we'll see. I'll show you what I've been doing. I brought some of these plants in when we had that light frost, but at this point I'm done bringing them in. We've got another one predicted. And I, it's just time, I'm ready. These are terracotta pots, they all have to be emptied. So I'm just gonna show you what I've been working on and some of my issues that I'm running into before our, uh, Minnesota. We always have such harsh winters. So I love this, I mean, look at that. We'll grow this next year. This is probably the most low maintenance plant I have ever grown flower, Lamon Talanum, and it's it's amazing. A lot of these I will be growing again next year from seed. I will be probably bringing in the pelargoniums. I'll see. Maybe trying some cuttings. I don't know. But yeah, so there's just been just things I'm not used to dealing with in October. First off, like I said, gorgeous weather. <laughs> Normally it's a little bit on the cool side and I've got a winter hat on and coat and I've been in a t-shirt. Um, this is a castor oil bean here. And um, I just look at, this is like a tree. And that started from a little tiny seed this year. So yeah, I mean, look at that. I can't imagine what this plant would be like where it's native. Cleaned up this with all the terracotta pots. With the terracotta pots I have to empty out all of that potty mix and I don't put it into my raised beds because it's peat based and I I wish I could find a potty mix that didn't contain peat and affordable. I, I hate peat. That is just, oh, I just don't like it. I filled this up with rocks for the time being. I had a big pot in back with some rocks. This would just offer some more stability for it. I don't think it's needed because um, these roses are holding this arch in pretty good. Look at this cane. I have to try and figure out what to do with. I'm like, it's huge. I'm just wondering if I should just cut that one off. I know it's huge, but holy moly. Nice rose hips. But yeah, I've been really working in my gardens to get ahead. Normally, I'm always so behind. These are just annuals still offering some color. Even though we had that light frost, for some reason, these just were okay. I probably have enough tree coverage to protect this. Loving the grasses so far. Um, let's see. So clearing out a lot of containers. I'm using my compost bins to, for a lot of it, try and, I hate my waste site. It is so horrible. I mean, it's, it's easy to get to, but it's just not set up right. I had gone on Saturday and I've waited forever. I'm like, only one vehicle can kind of fit in there and that's just, that's not cool. So yeah, um, I just put this here for the time being. I am thinking about
about not doing a lot of annual vines next year for myself. That being said, I do grow them for my aunt. She loves them. She's got a gazebo that she lets them climb over. But they're just, they're a lot of work, especially at the end of the season, but I love this one. So I probably will grow this one again. This has just been a trooper and blooming and even the foliage is beautiful. It's Acerina vine and so I'm really liking this one a lot. And then these are just some plants I'm going to bring in. I did bring this one in, but at this point I'm kind of like, mm. and I'm not going to overwinter my elephant ears. They're just so prone to bugs. And my plant room is where I grow most of my seedlings or all my seedlings. And I don't want to take that chance of bringing bugs into it. These are still looking really good. But yeah, so I've been cleaning this out. I have some, so some plastic containers might stay out with potty mix in because I do reuse my potty mix for for the following years just because I try and save money and with them being outside and especially in a really cold winter zone kind of kills off whatever bugs are in there. And I've never had an issue just that's that's the way I've always done it but that works for me. It may not for you gonna work on getting this cleared out. I'm surprised these colladiums are still upright with that. Let's see here. Anything? And you know, the cleanup for fall for me is basically in my containers and I usually mow and mulch my leaves and then use the leaves either in my compost bins or as a mulch for my beds, but I don't cut any of this down. I leave all of this up just to help protect the plants through a harsh winter in, in case we don't get the snow, which is kind of weird because we do, but who knows. But also some of these are native and they're food for the wildlife, protection for certain bugs. So yeah, there's not a lot of work in here. But yeah, but look. I don't think I've ever been this early with cleaning out my vegetable beds, which I feel so good about this because last year I never got to my tomatoes and that I didn't like. So that I'm just trying to make sure I'm caught up this year. So going into spring next year, I don't feel so behind, but yeah, I can't believe it. And um, so over here, I did have PDC pipe in here, but they just kind of go into, there it is. So they're up in storage too. And then I got this all out. I had some leaves in here, but all the stuff on the bottom was composted. So I was able to spread that on some of my gardens. So this one is empty, except I have been adding to this. And then this one is getting there. Not, not this year. And same with the next one. So, but I got all of this cleaned up. It just feels so good. I'm tired of having things pile up. And then back here is where I've been working. And my, my arches are, like I said, at the curb for free. I just, I'm, I was just getting a little claustrophobic back here. And I just went with this. And these are Thujas. They're full speed of hedge, American pillar. <clears throat> And I got these from Great Garden Plants. I'm not sponsored, but they were already in sale for $17.99, I think, for a gallon container plus another 25% off. So I thought that was amazing. They're about five feet apart. I tried my best. And then they get about 20 feet tall. So it'll offer a nice privacy hedge. And once established, they can put on about three feet in a season from what I've read. But I'm just going to show you, I just watered this one. And I'll show you how I've been watering anything that I planted this year. So I laid some of my compost down that I made on my own. I use a lot of leaves and I use grass clippings. I don't treat my lawns. So this is, and a lot of times what I do is I know how much to give my plants, but it's also based on I grab a watering can and then I count. And I kind of know how much I'm giving. So if I count to 15 seconds, it's usually about two gallons of water. So, and that be, I am super dry. So I, I like to give it a pretty good 
soak. So I'm not doing it quite so often. And that way the roots can kind of go out. The ground is rock hard, so this is softening it up. But I do it until I see it pool a little bit more. But right now you can see it's still soaking away pretty good. And I will just keep doing this. Like I said, if, if we were wet, it would definitely not be soaking in this quick. But I really want to give these a good start to the season before we get into the, the cold weather. If I lived in a mild zone and I could water your I would not be minding. Be like, okay. But yeah. I usually aim for about three to five gallons of water for a shrub. This might seem overkill to a lot of you. Like I said, I know my soil type and how well it drains and also how dry we've been or are. There is no rain in the forecast for um, about two weeks now. So getting this all cleaned up. And then I had extended this bed just a little bit more. I had some cardboard that I wanted to use up. So then um, some of this, I'm just trying to see. I have some of these rocks sitting on the cardboard. I have Creeping Charlie back here, so I'm hoping to kind of prevent it going into these gardens. But I laid down a lot of my own compost over here. I just got done watering this. I try and go about once every four to five days if I can, and we've just been that dry. So I got all my hostas here. I did a video on that. Just also, I think I lost some of my tags. Thank you, squirrels. But back here, I have a Liguleria that I put in here. I've been babying this plant. It wasn't another, it was in my misfit garden and I moved it here. It wasn't doing so good. We were underwater in the, early in the season. So it should have more purple foliage, Britt Marie Crawford. And this is a proud berry that I got from Great Garden Plants. This was in a quart. This is the size you get, but they have a great selection. Um, rabbits do like this. But it's probably because it's, uh, I don't know, very dainty foliage right now. But I like that bluish tinge to it. Another tiny wine nine bark. This is a clethra I planted here. Another shrub I planted this late in the season last year. It was struggling where it was at, so I moved it here and it's doing pretty good. And another one that was an area I didn't like. Dwarf blue. Arctic willow likes a lot more water than what it was getting over there and more sun. It might like it here. Then I move the European ginger over here. So if it ever decides to spread in its lifetime, which I've had this for two years and it has not, it's just clumped up. At least I've got like the rock to kind of contain it. And I might just end up rounding that out a little bit more at some point. Depending. I'm, this is where I'm putting a lot of my spent potty mix. But the one thing about peat is if it's not hydrated, it, the water just one, runs right off it. But this is my compost on here. But I'm um, just trying to figure out if there's a clump somewhere that I can show you. I, I really don't like peat. But it is budget friendly. That being said, I'm, I don't recommend it. I wish I could find a potty mix. Like I said, that was affordable. I've tried making my own and... <laughs> I failed miserably. Let's see here. Oh, I was gonna show you. So, this is where I'm struggling with this. Cause look, we are so dry. I was doing this a little bit last season, but it greened up at the start and ugh, just, I'm already losing two trees and yes, two, because I have to get rid of the one to get to the other one safely with a crane. Yeah. But there's, there's no way I could give this water to make it happy. And at this point, I would have to continually water until we have a really hard freeze. And I don't want to do that. Because like I said, I don't know how much to give it to actually make it happy. And then I'll show you also. So anything I planted this year is getting watered, but everything else is kind of on its own. That is kind of my, my standpoint on things, unfortunately. I've never had Kiloni turtle head do this. It's been doing this for a bit. Like I said, without two weeks of water now in the forecast, I'm just, but the roots right now are probably really deep 
and in a good spot. If I start watering, those roots are going to start coming up to the surface. So just fingers crossed that this pulls through for next season. Maybe our winter isn't so mild and maybe we'll get a good amount of rain at some point. So I just watered this one over here, but the foliage on this hydrangea is horrible. But the incredible looks incredible. <laughs> I have no clue why that one's looking so good. That's usually the first one to start drooping, but that looks uh, amazing. Eh. So, I mean, you wouldn't know because the grass over here is green, but as we start getting to these massive trees, this is where they just suck up all of that moisture. I am not watering anything in this garden. This will probably have a lot of destruction with this tree. I'm not gonna waste a natural resource on this right now. At some point I'll start mowing, not yet, because we haven't had rain, so I'm afraid if whatever I do mow, it's just gonna be as brown as can be and not healthy. I did get another um, Siberian Cypress. This is from Amazon. It's Celtic Pride and it looks amazing. This is what I mean by peat. I'm like, and so this is a garden that I'm going to be mulching with, with my leaves, especially um, mulched up leaves. They just, they're a little bit better. And then hopefully that adds a lot of organic matter and just help with that. Because when I water in this garden, it just, the water beads up and runs right off until this can actually absorb it. Cause it's just, it's, I just don't like it. And so I have this bench here. I really like it. I probably will bring it inside. I don't know if I want it out here. But I really like it, but I like it out here because um, when I can have a fire pit, it's where I put s'mores and a beverage. Um, anything else in here? Nope. So I've just been dumping a lot of my potty mix. I have to clean out the whiskey barrel and get that moved. <laughs> That's going to be a feat in itself. I was going to show you because, yeah, we're green on well the north side because it is the north side but look at this how crunchy so. oh this just makes me so sad love this I love pine trees and that's just more stuff that came down from the trees I, I can't burn right now because right now I'd probably start a fire with especially leaves on the ground and being dry. They haven't said anything about a burn ban yet, but I'm just being overly cautious. Over here, this is where I had the European ginger. And so I had some extra brunera and I just kind of gonna create a drift with it. I like that. I did love the European ginger here. It had a little different color, but again, it's just, I don't know. I was a little nervous. People say how aggressive it can be. I'm not seeing that yet. Maybe it's just needs a little bit. But look, my steakhorn sumac is starting to color up. That is so pretty. Can't wait. And this is what caladiums do when they don't like it. Pretty sure I said, but what a beautiful fall day. We got the containers cleaned out here. And then Thought I was doing a good enough job with this arborvitae, but I guess not. <laughs> we did, we got all that rain, I think six to seven inches and it was absolutely beautiful. And then wham, nothing. This is looking good, all of this. I have been keeping this well watered. So I just did water this, but this is pretty established right now. The roots I can tell cause it's not wilting. I did move the pulmonaria over here I'm surprised they were living where I had them because they were bone dry. Uh, back here, my poor ivory halo dogwood is throwing a fit. This is just such a well-drained area, so 
Again, everything's watered here. Oh, hey, my hydrangeas perked up. They were wilting pretty badly too. So I did a video on this about the hostas that I added. Can't wait. I'm just very happy the rabbits haven't found these. I think the squirrels have because the tags are, are all out. Must be a game to them. Oh, and I was just gonna, I have an audience. I'm just gonna show you again. It's kind of cute. That is definitely her favorite spot just to look out. So a lot of you ask about the Sun King Aurelias. They're perennial, they're not a shrub. So all this foliage will die to the ground once we have a really hard freeze. And then the foliage emerges, emerges in spring and you get all this brand new foliage. So unfortunately, I like this. Those will create a hedge during the growing season, but when it's not, it will be a blank area. That's okay. This dogwood, hopefully it pulls through. We'll offer a little something. And again, with these trees going down, I might have some different options for things back there. This is where I had the pulmonaria. And you wouldn't know that they were in here. They, they're a good size. I guess I'm just surprised they're growing. So yeah, so I just, I can't wait to use these leaves for, I love them for composting, especially when I mulch them. They just break down really good. They just add a lot of organic matter. I don't see anything else. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to move anything in this garden either. Which is sad because this just looks so good here. Yeah, so that's what I've been up to. I'm still watering a few things. Some of my plastic containers will stay out during the winter season. They're, those are fine. All of the ter terracotta have to be brought in. I do have storage, which is a lot of work. And that's where it's like all that potty mix. I just, I may have to think about something different for next year. Because if I have to always start with new potty mix, I want to have something that's not quite so... Ugh full of peat. We have this thing here, so this whiskey barrel on its own, it probably weighs about 50 pounds and it's full of soil. And then I have to figure out where I want to plant the lamb. I'm only thinking uh, under the pine tree back there. I think it'll be fine. It tends to do okay in dry conditions. And I can just kind of creep where it wants back there. So hopefully you're having a beautiful fall day too and working in your gardens and have some really nice color going on. Again, I'm in a t-shirt right now. It feels amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed and bye for now.